Hello everyone, welcome back to day two of 6.1, um, adding and subtracting polynomials. So today we're getting into day two, which means we're going to be specifically subtracting two polynomials and see what type of expression is the result. And here we have our first example. And when we subtract, it's almost exactly identical to adding with only one extra step. So the only extra step is that we will be um, rewriting the second term with the negative that is being distributed. So we're going to redistribute the negative through every term in the second parenthesis. So we got negative negative, which gives us, and we're going to change that to, to a plus, so that way we can um, we can rewrite the answer. And if you want to like um, show all your work without skipping any step, the best thing to do is rewrite the first parentheses uh, without the parentheses and then distributing. That way we can cancel out. So we got negative negative, which is positive c to the fourth. And then we got negative 4c to the third. And we have plus c squared and minus 5. And now we could freely combine our like terms just like what we did yesterday. And we're going to start with the highest power, which is c to the fourth. We got two of them. So 1 plus 1, the coefficient, would be 2c to the fourth. And then minus c to the third minus 4c to the third gives us a minus 5c to the third. So like I said, as you go, you want to start canceling the same terms so that way they're not in the way. And then we have... Um, only one x squared term here, so we're going to just bring that down. And then um, we have um, 7c uh, by itself again, which means we're just going to bring it down. And then finally, minus 12 minus 5, which gives us a negative 17. And that gives us the final answer right here in standard form. And simplified form. So that's basically how you subtract. So I'm going to do one more and like I said we're going to just start rewriting everything in the first parentheses, copy it the way it is, and distribute that negative to the second set of parentheses. So we got minus 2r squared plus 8. And again we're going to start with the highest power which is 3r cubed and then minus 2r squared. These are both by itself. They don't have um, any like term. Next we have r by itself and then the 8 and negative 8 actually cancels out nicely. So that leaves us only three terms in our answer. And moving on. So this one we are going to, um, you're going to be um, trying it on your own. So go ahead and pause the video before you actually look at the answers. Hopefully you've had a chance to try the problems and we're going to do the same thing that we did earlier. We're going to subtract. Then first we're going to copy the first term and then distribute the second one. So negative negative is plus 9x to the fourth minus 6x squared and a plus 31. And again we're going to combine the like terms. So x to the seventh is by itself. So we're going to bring that down and we have a 9, negative 9x to the 4th plus 9x fourth. well that cancels each other out because they are opposites. And then uh, we have 6x squared by itself, so we're going to bring that down. And then we got uh, no x term, and finally 1 plus 31 gives us a plus 32, and this is the final answer. And let me fix that. So that's the final answer in standard form. And the next one, we're going to do the same thing. So copying the first terms in the first parentheses. And we're going to distribute the negative. So we've got a minus 2x to the fifth and a minus 9x squared. And next, we're going to combine the like terms by starting with the x to the fifth, which is the highest. So we got negative 8, negative 2, and it gives us a negative 10x to the fifth. And then next term would be highest is 7x to the third, and that's by itself. So we're going to bring down 7x to the third. And then we got 20x squared minus 9. That's going to be a plus 11x squared. 
And finally, 13x is by itself, so we're going to just copy it down, and that is our final answer. And that is basically how we subtract. So we've done a few problems subtracting the polynomials. Um, you're going to work further with your partner um, or by yourself if you don't have a partner um, to figure out the answers for this question right here. For the polynomial um, that is given right here, you are being asked to write it in standard form. So think about what standard form means and go ahead and write the standard form um, next to the first line here. Hopefully you've had a chance to try it. Let's go ahead and start with the, the highest degree, which is x to the fifth. So we're going to start by writing the highest term here. And the next is um, x to the fourth. So we're going to bring down the x to the fourth here. And then we're going to um, go down the list to x to the third, to x squared, and then 2x, and finally a minus 1. So this is your standard form going from 5 to 4 to 3 to 2 to 1 and 0. And that's basically how you rewrite it in standard form. The leading coefficient, again, is the number, the coefficient that is in front of the highest degree, which is the first one. That's 9. And the degree is classified by the power with the first term, which means that it's a fifth degree. And the number of terms, so we can just count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are six terms in this polynomial. And... Last one, what polynomial could you add to this one right here that will get you a sum of this? So we're going to start with um, the first expression. We're going to add something to it. We don't know what, but we're going to add something that will give us this um, answer right here. But we're going to rewrite it in standard form. So we have 4x to the 4th um, minus x to the 3rd plus 3x squared and then plus 3x and finally a plus 3. So I just rewrote the answer in standard form. Now we can easily line up and think, well, what do I need to add from 3 to get to 4? Well, obviously that's going to be 1x to the 4th, right? And then how do I go from negative 9 to a negative 1? That means we're going to have to add 8. And then 5... Um, plus what is going to give you a 3? So actually, it's going to be a, a plus negative 2x squared. So 5 minus 2 equals 3. And then how do I go from negative 1 to 3? Which means you're going to have to add 4x. And finally, how do I go from 7 to 3? That means I need to subtract 4. So the resulting answer that I need to add to get to the final answer is that right there. So that would be the answer that you would add. That's the polynomial that you need to add to get that answer right there. And that is the end of the problems for today. Um, just kidding, we have one more. So you're gonna actually try this problem um, on your own uh, before we go on. So example one, um, a rectangle has a length of x. So we're going to draw a rectangle. And the length is x. The width is 3x to the third plus 3 minus x squared. It says write and simplify the expression for the perimeter. So as you recall, the um, formula for finding a perimeter is length plus width plus length plus width, which means twice the length plus twice the width. So you can either go perimeter equals twice the length plus twice the width, uh, and then or you can just add everything together. So we're going to use the formula, which means it's going to be twice the length. So that's twice times x. That's plus 2 times 3x to the third plus 3 minus x squared. Next, we're going to just distribute and multiply. That's 2x plus 6x cubed plus 6 minus 2x squared. And then finally, we're going to put this in standard form. So we're going to have um, x to the third first, minus 2x squared, plus 2x, and a plus 6. And that would be your perimeter for this uh, rectangle. 
and it says next find the perimeter when the length is given six feet so we're going to have perimeter equals i'm going to substitute wherever x is uh, because the length is actually x right so it's now given as x so we're going to substitute wherever we see x we're going to put in six so that would be six times six cubed minus two times six squared plus two times six and plus six Working it all out, that would be 1296 minus 72 plus 12 plus 6. And go ahead and use a calculator to verify the answers that I'm getting. And you should get 1242 feet for the perimeter. And that should be the final answer. And you're going to do this problem by yourself, which actually is, should be almost the same thing as what we did above. Um, so you're going to try this before you look at the answer. An account finds that the gross income in thousands of dollars of a small business can be modeled by the polynomial um, 0.3 t squared plus 8t plus 198, where t is the number of years after 2010. The yearly expenses of the business in thousands of dollars can be modeled by the polynomial right here. So we've got expenses and we've got uh, income. So in case um, you guys need a little formula to help you find out, uh, it's asking you to predict the net profit of the business. So let's start with the formula that profit is equal to income minus expense. And so we have the profit, which is going to be the income that is given by its point, negative 0 0.03 t squared plus 8t plus 198 minus the expense of negative 0 0.2 t squared plus 2t plus 131. And remember, we're just going to follow the subtraction uh, protocols and we're going to rewrite the first one and distribute the negative to each one in the back. So that would be a plus 0 0.2 t squared minus 2t and a minus 131. And combining the like terms, it'll give us negative 0.3 plus 0.2 gives us a negative 0.1t squared. And then 8t minus 2t gives us a 6t. And then 198 minus 131 is plus 67. And that is the um, polynomial that represents the profit. But now the next question is going to ask us, assuming that the model continues to hold, how much net profit can you expect to make in the year? 2016. So this is the profit in 2010, and if you continue, that will be um, six years later. So we're going to actually just um, multiply and substitute and let t, because that would be actually six years later, right? So we're going to um, let t be six. So the profit is going to be negative 0.1 times 6 squared t equals 6, so um, plus 6 times 6 plus 67. Combining everything together is negative 3.6 plus 36 plus 67 should give us a 99.4. And remember, this is in 1,000. And so rewriting it would be $99,400. And the last problem you're going to try by yourself, doing the same thing that we just did. The profit earned by the sales division. So go ahead and pause the video and try the problem before you actually look at the answers. Um, profit earned can be modeled by this expression right here. And then x is the number of units. So the profit earned by manufacturing division can be modeled with this poly, uh, the polynomial. So again, we're going to use the profit equals income minus expense. So we have the profit. Uh, that's going to be given by the um, income. The sales earned here is x to the third minus x squared plus 2x minus 100. And then minus the expense um, is going to be x squared minus 4x minus 300. And so subtracting the two, we're going to... Um, Distribute that, so that's minus x squared um, plus 4x plus 300. And so we got 
x cubed by itself minus 2x squared plus 6x plus 200 would be the polynomial that represents the profit. What is the total amount of profit that the company earns from both divisions? So um, we're going to take the profit that is earned from the first store, which is x to the third minus x squared plus 2x minus 100, and then add it to the second store. So we're going to, so, um, so the, the profit for the first store is here, and we're going to add the profit for the second store because we're trying to find the total sum of the profit for the two stores. So earlier we were looking for the difference between the two, and now we're going to look for the sum of the profit. So we're going to add everything together, and we're going to have um, the negative x squared and x squared will cancel out. We got 2 minus 4, that's a minus 2x. And then 100 minus negative 100 minus, minus 300 gives us a minus 400. So this is the profit for the um, total of the two divisions. And then on top, we've got the difference between the profits. And that is the end of the problem. And here's the discussion problem. Is the difference between two polynomials always a polynomial? And the answer is yes. That is true um, because when you add two polynomials, you're only working with polynomials. And likewise, when you subtract two polynomials, you're always going to be actually working with polynomials as well. So polynomial minus polynomial is still going to give you polynomial. Even when you cancel everything and you get zero, it is still considered a polynomial. So that is the conclusion of this lesson. So hopefully you learn how to add and subtract polynomials um, in, the, in the last two days. So go ahead and log into your Google Classroom and get started with your homework assignment for today. See you tomorrow.